much, you know, it's like when your favorite band gets big, right? Like you love this band, you go and see them, then they get big, and then you get mad at them for getting big. It's like this fucked up relationship. That's exactly what's gonna happen here. It's gonna happen. What is going on guys? So I'm gonna run you through a vlog and make a conscious effort to really talk more in these vlogs about the struggles that I go through with my business. Because I think a lot of people are interested in that. Um, and just the day to day, all those sorts of things. And honestly, I do get like wrapped up with things like stressed and just focused on what I'm actually trying to do and I forget to do things like this. But I think that this has a ton of value for a lot of you guys because I do get a lot of questions about coaching, how I got into it, all that sort of thing. So I kind of want to touch on that and just talk more about the details of things because I do get like really stressed out with things. There's a lot of things that I don't know on the business side of things logistically. So yeah, anyways, I'm about to go head to the gym right now. I have a full body workout. I'm lifting right now four days per week. I'm doing four full body workouts. I'll explain that more a little bit too. Um, but I'm going to be working up to a max effort triple today on the squat. I'm doing no belt, no knee sleeves, no Olympic lifting shoes right now. And I've been doing that for about three weeks. Um, I'll talk more about this in a bit, but I'm going to be heading to the gym. I'm going to go mix my pre-workout, all that crap. And talk to you guys in just a little bit. All right, so as of late, I've been trying out some Allegiant Athletics products. Um, this is their pre-workout pulse. It's like the blue raspberry flavor. Quite honestly, it's not the best tasting. Um, I'm gonna try out some other flavors, but um, I really enjoy the effects of it. Um, but keep in mind, guys, when it comes to pre-workouts especially and supplements in general, you really just wanna make sure that you're not overly investing yourself into them because they're supplements. So what that means is it's a supplement to your diet itself. Your diet meaning your normal food and the things you're actually ingesting throughout the day, which should be number one. And if you don't have those dialed in first, you shouldn't be spending your money on all these supplements, expecting results to happen without that foundation of your diet being in place first. So that's my big thing there. It's, it's, it's really a luxury. Caffeine definitely helps. There's tons of supplements out there that do have um, uh, beneficial effects. But like I said, if you're wasting your time and money expecting those things to give you the results that a good diet and nutrition won't, um, those are just going to enhance things that help you in the scheme of things, but it's not going to make or break your success. You can have a ton of success, whether that's putting on muscle or losing fat without any supplements altogether. The two that I would recommend, if anyone um, of you are out there like, okay, what would you recommend, Joe, out of the things that there um, are available like to really help you just overall health-wise? A multivitamin. A good, reputable multivitamin is going to be huge just to help get you in the adequate amount of vitamins and minerals you need throughout the day. So I'm taking Legion's Triumph. Um, PE Science is another good one. They have um, a multivitamin. This is their fish oil. Um, but multivitamin. And then the other thing I think people a lot of times are always lacking seems to be protein. So here's just a random protein. Um, and here is Legion's protein, which I'm also trying. But yeah, so the other thing that I see a lot of people lacking is protein intake. So they have, they have struggles with it. It's just hard for them to do. Um, it's hard for them to get in the adequate amount, 0.8 to a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass um, or lean body weight. So yeah, I think that's the two main ones I would say. But even then, if you can get in an adequate amount of protein from your um, from your food itself, you can get an adequate amount of protein in from just food alone. You do not need protein powder. There's no magic in that. It just helps you, it's convenient, and that's really the main thing there. So I'm having a so I'm having a quick bowl of rice right now. It's just like one cup, like instant rice, jasmine rice. Um, I'm going to put some soy sauce on that, and that is going to be what I'm going to have quickly right now before I head to the gym. Um, I just wanted to mention that because normally I've been going to the gym actually lately fasted, so I just mixed my pre-workout as you guys saw, but then I was going to just head right to the gym, but I'm feeling pretty hungry, so I will have something light, like either like a bagel with some butter on it, or I'll do um, a cup of rice with a little bit of soy sauce. It just really all depends on kind of what I want to do. Um, but otherwise, like I said, I will live fasted. Um, I can talk more about that if you guys would be interested, but um, it's something I do enjoy, but there's kind of some cost benefit to it um, as well. Anyways, about to eat this rice, a little bit of soy sauce, get those sodium gains, get a little bit of carbs in me, and yeah, peace out. I get it. 
And, and really, I'm not looking to be Debbie Downer, but I want people to wrap their fucking head around this. This is going to be a long game. So here's a perfect example of how things change when you're running your own business. I think like at like it was like 10 o'clock, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to the gym now. I had that bowl of rice. Yeah, I started drinking my pre-workout and I started feeling my pre-workout and then I actually jumped on the computer and just started diving into a whole bunch of stuff that I shouldn't have got into and it was productive stuff, things that I need to get taken care of, but it's now 12.30 and I'm not at the gym yet. So about to go actually to the gym now and then I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble. There's a few books that I actually want to check out and buy um, and then I'll catch up with you guys then. Time to get a move on. Be so. Love you. Love you. So for those who don't know, I live in Waukesha, Wisconsin, which is like 20 minutes outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which most people are more familiar with than Waukesha, of course. But as you can tell, it's getting pretty cold here. Let's see what the gauge says. 31 degrees. So yeah, pretty warm. Oh, don't want to lose you guys. But I just want to do, uh, let you know how much we suffer here in Wisconsin. You got to go, you got to get in the cold, you got to grind it out. But that's part of the fun of it, right? Not really, but anyways, peace out. Lately, I've just been training at um, Anytime Fitness. And I think a lot of times people get these like things in their head where they need to be training at these like really specific gyms or like these really cool gyms with all these fancy equipment. And I think there's something to be said about being able to be creative, not only in a gym where there's not a lot of fancy machines or fancy equipment and being able to get it done, because that'll have an effect on you long term if you're ever traveling or you just get to a place where they don't have a lot of gyms that are close to you and access wise, you only can afford, or I guess time wise, you only can afford um, because your schedule only allows it to go to that gym close to you. So being able to do that and being able to get stuff done, even though it's maybe in Anytime Fitness, which this one's actually really nice, I do enjoy it you can still get a lot of work done. And actually, I've been making more progress lately than I have um, when I was going to like this big commercial gym um, previously. So, um, and that's actually why I left that commercial gym. It was super cheap. I pay like three times the amount here, even though it's any time. But um, I get a lot more work done, a lot more um, focus. There's not a lot of distractions and I like it. So anyways, just my two cents. Alright, so what is going on guys? So I want to do a quick overview of my warm-up for squats and just my warm-ups in general, kind of my take on them. So I'm going to be just showing you guys my warm-up as I progress to a top set of a triple for the day, which I was going for and planning for 315, which I ended up doing, which was a PR for me for a beltless, knee sleeveless, and squat shoeless um, squat. So it's kind of funny to say, but... Um, I'm working on going beltless, knee sleeveless, and no squat shoes, um, just simply because I want to see how that affects things once I do add them back in, which I think I'm going to be doing soon. But yeah, anyway, so getting to the point, I started out with the bar, I always start, with, start out with the bar, and the main thing I'm performing with the movement is intention. So making sure that I am treating that bar set just as I would my top set for the day. So started out with about five to eight reps, um, really no right or wrong with 135 after I did the bar for about the same amount of reps. Then I moved right to 225. This is something that you're going to need to be basing off of your preference and your strength level as well as your experience. So if you don't have proper form, don't make a plate jump like that. You might even want to start with 25s. But for me, I went to 225, hit that for three reps, and then I moved to 275 and hit that for only one rep. I knew, like I said, that I was going to be going for that 315 for the day, so I then acclimated accordingly to that, leaving myself with gas in the tank, not burning myself out. We're hitting 275 for three reps as well, whereas I only just hit it for one to save some reps and save some gas in the tank. But here's the top set at 315. So I also wanted to give you guys a um, just a little insight who that guy was. He was someone I actually met at the gym 
Um, I can't remember his name right now, but I'll throw it up on the screen ideally um, so he can get some love. But really great guy. Ended up throwing on the weights for me, as you saw. Um, he's actually from California, but we ended up talking for a while. Um, getting to the video, you guys just saw some do some hip hinging. Um, I did back extension as my hip hinge variation for the day because I kind of felt a little twinge in my lower back. Nothing too serious, but I didn't want to do my heavy RDLs that I had been doing. Um, so I went with that back extension, which felt really good, and I'm feeling really good um, right now. Then I also did do some RDLs with dumbbells with lighter weights just to get some posterior chain activation, a little bit more hamstring-specific activation. Um, and then for my full body workout for the day, I started out with a squat. I got the hip hinge in there. Then I went to my pulling variation, which was a chest supported row. Ended up hitting the 60s for 12 reps, which I believe is a PR for me, um, close to a PR at least. But I love the chest supported row. And then my pushing variation for the day was a dumbbell incline. Um, after this, I did throw in some ab work that I did not record. So I wanted to run this over um, and give you guys a little bit of a commentary on things. Let me know if you like this commentary style, and let me know if you're liking these vlogs. Leave some comments below, guys. I love hearing from you. So, um, yeah, let's get back to the rest of the vlog and talk to you guys in just a second. All right, so I just got done at the gym, and I'm headed to Barnes & Noble right now. I'm just going to get a few books that I've been looking to get, and then I'll check in with you guys after that. Probably going to get some food, and to be honest, I haven't eaten anything all day, like, really at all, except for that rice and, like, a protein shake this morning. It's, like, 2.15, so I might smash some Culver's which is a really good burger spot in the Midwest if you're not from around here. Might smash some Culver's. And yeah, we'll see. Talk to you guys after. So I was in there for way longer than I expected and Chick-fil-A is right here. So we about to smash on some Chick-fil-A. Hey, my name is Kirk, can I have an interview order? Joe. All right, Joe, go ahead and order whenever you're ready. Hey, Joe, this is Kirk from Chick-fil-A. And that will do it, man. All right, total 1160, it'll be our pleasure to serve you the window. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. So, there seems to be like this misconception with me specifically. I think it's just because I'm not transparent enough about like what I eat and like how my diet structures pretty much on like a daily basis. I eat stuff like this all the time. I probably eat out like once a day and people always think that I eat this like super clean diet all the time, which I do try to stick to about 80% of the time, like 70, 80% of the time. But I do enjoy foods that are quote unquote unhealthy or bad foods like a lot of people would consider Chick-fil-A not to be the best which it isn't but at the same time if you're diligent and consistent 70-80% of the time you can fit things in like this without really worrying so much and a lot of people don't understand that um, and they think it needs to be like so black and white with things when in reality it just doesn't but anyways I'll talk more about this in a bit I'm driving all right, what is going on, guys? So I just got back from eating some food, and um, I'm gonna show you guys these. Oh, they're upside down. I'm gonna show you guys the books that I got. Kind of go over them briefly, and then when I actually read them, I'm going to give you guys a brief like overview, a review. Sorry, I just burped. Um, a review of them and just see what I would recommend to you guys. So um, kind of going over them from top to bottom. Broke Millennial. I actually don't. Nobody recommended this to me. I actually just saw this when I was. Um, browsing for another book, looking for another book that I actually wanted, um, but it seems really good, seems very informative. A lot of things that I think people our age and myself just started learning because I had to with my business, but something that I think a lot of people can benefit from, from like the 20 pages I read. Um, so yeah, and when I normally pick up a book, I read like the first like 10, you can read like the first 5, 10, 15, 20 pages in the front, and then I also pick like a random point in the middle of the book and start reading that just to see, like just a feel for the book. So. Just a random overview of kind of how I go about that. But yeah, this is the first one. Second one is one that was recommended by Jonathan Goodman, which if you don't know who Jonathan Goodman is, you definitely should, especially if you're in the online coaching world. You're an online coach. You want to learn more about online coaching. Maybe you want to do it. Jonathan Goodman, you need to look up. One of his recommendations was this book called Lin Lin Lynch Lynchpin. And basically what it is is on the front it says, Are You Indispensable? What it is and what he describes it as is the fact that personal training, Perfect example, saturated market as a lot of people would say who are trying to get into it, which is totally wrong, but the r way you're able to really separate yourself is really through certain different things that people really att are attracted to that make you more valuable than the next guy, make you indispensable. So that's the big thing there. I'm really excited to read this. Very, very excited to read this. 
the happiness trap. This is something I was recommended to as well by actually a follower of mine, um, talking about how to stop struggling and start living, talking about how you can really benefit yourself um, on mindfulness and reducing stress, overcoming fear, um, and creating a rich and meaningful life. That's what it says right on the front here. But what up, Zoe? Um, but yeah, so that's basically what this is about. I'm very excited to read this. Like I said, recommended to me. Uh, let me shut the door and um, own the day, own your life. This is something um, that I'm really excited to read as well. Aubrey Marcus, he's one of the owners of On It Supplements, friend of Joe Rogan's. If you follow the Joe Rogan podcast or if you know who Aubrey Marcus is, um, then you're familiar with his book, I'm sure, because he's talked about it a lot recently. Very excited to read this. Just kind of overall on the front, it's like own your life, optimize practices, walking, working, learning, eating, training, playing, sleeping, and sex. So all the above there, very excited to read this. My buddy Jake Thien also, I think, read this. Not sure, but um, yeah, excited to read this as well. And also support a guy that I support even more. <clears throat> Some fun stuff. Some small business taxes for dummies. So everyone that I've talked to is always like, just hire someone, just hire someone. I do need to learn for myself though, just because something uh, Brett from Topline just talked to me about, he was like, if you don't know something in business, it is a disadvantage to you. So that is huge. And I mean, obviously that's kind of common sense, but like whatever you don't know is a huge disadvantage and whatever you do know compared to the next guy is an advantage. So I need to brush up on things. This is a good place to start, I think, um, just to get a kind of a ground level foundation knowledge on taxes, especially regarding my own business. So, and then the last one this is for my buddy Mark. Um, I'm gonna do some reading on this myself, but there's a lot of recipes in here, a lot of information on the low FODMAP, FODMAP diet for IBS. My buddy Mark, my best buddy, helps out with the um, uh, video side of things helps out with all ton of stuff. We do the weddings together. He has IBS. He's also celiac, so he's on um, the low FODMAP diet um, and also a gluten free diet. So, got this for this dude so he can ha ideally eat some more delicious foods. But, anyways, guys, I'm gonna close out the video here. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. That's the other thing with these YouTube videos. I gotta like, I'm already starting to upload and edit this video, and then I'm gonna throw this clip in at the end and then get started tonight. Tonight is actually exciting. I got a lot of things coming for you guys, like I mentioned in my last video, if you didn't check that out, but big things are coming. Starting a podcast with two other guys who you're gonna in be introduced to tonight on the channel. I'm excited for it. Stay tuned for that. Um, one other thing I wanted to just touch on, which I was already talking about, is the whole like getting so wrapped up in trying to be perfect, and that's impossible. The big thing you need to focus on is consistency and compliance, and that goes for workouts as well as the nutrition side of things. I was already talking about when it comes to like Chick-fil-A, that is not going to ruin your progress. It's the thing that is going to be you doing, it's the thing you do most often, most consistently, that is going to really add up and compound over time. So if you're more consistently hitting the numbers that you need to be calorie-wise, you're staying consistent 80% of the time with the good, healthy, nutritious foods and you're staying on point with a workout routine that's sustainable for you, that's tailored to you, that's dialed in both mentally and physically from, from your standpoint, and by that I mean enjoying it, making sure it's realistic, you're not over-training, um, or over-training in terms of what you can recover from or what you should be training um, towards the amount you should be training, all those things matter. I'm blabbering on here, but my point is, don't be so hard on yourself, be compliant, number one, and that starts with a sustainable plan that you can really sustain and stay consistent with to produce the results over a long course of time and produce them for a lifetime. So that's what really matters. No sense in putting in work in a short period of time just for those results to then wither away because it wasn't in a sustainable manner. I'll leave you guys with that. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Comment below if you have any questions, or if you guys want to see anything specifically, drop it below. Take it easy, guys. Have a good night, and thank you for watching.